Um, hello everybody, my name is Sébastien Duval and I'll be talking about a couple analysis of the flip family of stream ciphers that we did together with Virginie Lallemand and Diane Rotella. Uh, so first I'm going to introduce the context which is uh, symmetric ciphers for fully homomorphic encryption. Um, I'm going to introduce the cipher and I'm going to talk about our attack, the possible improvements we have and the experimental verification we did. Uh, so first, let's go very fast to the basics of fully homomorphic encryption. So the idea is you don't have much computational power, so you want to delegate your uh, computations to the cloud. So you are going to uh, send your data to the cloud, but you don't want the cloud to get any information about your data. So you are going to encrypt it using a um, homomorphic encryption algorithm. Uh, the cloud will perform its operations homomorphically and then send the data back to you, you decrypt it, and you get the message modified in the right manner. Um, there is one problem here, which is that the homomorphic encryption algorithms we have uh, output huge ciphertext. Uh, so if you have many messages or, or big messages, it's not going to be very practical. So one way to, uh, to go around this is to add a symmetric encryption on top of it. Uh, what, you, uh, what you encrypt using the homomorphic encryption algorithm is the key to the symmetric encryption. Uh, that key is r relatively small and it's uh, of fixed size and you send it only once, so that's not too costly. Um, and in parallel to this, you encrypt your message using the symmetric encryption algorithm. You send all this to the cloud and the cloud on its side will be able to uh, perform homomorphically the inverse evaluation of the symmetric encryption algorithm and get back the ciphertext like there was no symmetric encryption in the process whatsoever. Um, there's still a problem here, which is that the homomorphic encryption algorithms we have use a parameter called noise. And if this noise grows too big, uh, it becomes very costly to handle. So we have to uh, limit the amount of noise. And noise grows mostly from nonlinear non operations done homomorphically. So for instance, multiplications. Uh, so for all uh, functions that are applied homomorphically, you want to limit the number of multiplications. Here, the function that is applied homomorphically is the inverse evaluation of the symmetric encryption algorithm. So, want, so you want to limit the number of multiplications in this. Uh, there are very few um, ciphers that uh, fit these kind of requirements. One of them is a block cipher called low MC. It's an SPN with the specificity that uh, the, um, the substitution layer is not applied on the entire word at every round um, to avoid having too many multi multiplications. The advantage of uh, block ciphers in this context is that uh, each bit of the ciphertext depends on the same number of multiplications, but that number of multiplications is uh, quite uh, big. Um, there are also stream ciphers, Trivium and Crevium, with the advantage that uh, uh, in stream ciphers, the first bits of the key stream, so the first bits of the ciphertext, depend on very few multiplications, but the number of multiplications uh, grows with the number of uh, ciphertext bits. So none of these uh, are excellent solutions, and a new uh, solution was proposed recently with a better noise management, it's called FLIP. Uh, FLIP was uh, designed by Pierre Meau, uh, Anthony Journeau, François Xavier Standard, and Claude Carlet, and it was published at Eurocup this year. But I'm not going to be talking about the version that was published. I'm going to talk about the version that was presented at a national seminar. It's also the version that was uh, submitted and accepted at Eurocup. It was modified afterwards uh, when we told the authors about our attack. So the version that is published uh, doesn't have uh, the flaws that the old one has. Um, so flip. flip. Flip is a stream cipher with uh, very few multiplications, and actually that number of multiplications is constant for every ciphertext bit. Uh, they achieve this through uh, a constant key register and a low degree function. In more details, this is flip. So there is a, a key register storing the key, k, there is a permutation generator that uh, outputs a random permutation at each time, and there is a filtering function f. Uh, this cipher outputs a keystring bit zi at each time, and this uh, keystring bit is XORed with the plain text to a plain the ciphertext. 
the way the keystroke bit ZI is produced is first you reorder the key bits and then you feed this to uh, the filtering function F. The only thing that changes at each time is the permutation used to reorder the key bits. Uh, this permutation, but this permutation is public because it's the output of a public uh, random permutation generator which depends on the public uh, PRNG, which depends on the public IV. So all this is public. The only thing that's not known to an attacker is the key. There's one more thing in the specification of flip, which is that the key should be balanced. Uh, so uh, let's look deeper. This is the filtering function F, at least in the early version, because that's what was changed the most in the new versions. Um, so the, the filtering function F is the direct sum of three main components. Uh, each of these components is meant to add resistance against one type of attack. There's a linear component, L, with N1 monomials of degree one. Uh, there's a quadratic component with uh, only monomials of degree two. And there is a triangle, so-called triangle, triangular function with one monomial of each degree between one and a certain degree k, which is the degree of the function f. Each bit of the key appears only once in the formula of f. And what we can notice already is that there are very few monomials of degree greater than or equal to three. And they are all in the function t, and they are the monomial of degree three, the monomial of degree four, until the monomial of degree k. There are only k minus two of those, so that's very few. Um, in the early versions, uh, the, the authors proposed two sets of parameters, one for an 80-bit security with a key uh, of 192 bits, and one for a security of 128 uh, with a key of 400 bits. Uh, we identified several vulnerabilities of flip, uh, because having a constant key register and a low uh, number of hydrogen monomials, that's excellent when it comes to FHE, but it can also be a weakness against guessing attacks. Indeed, having a constant key register means that if you make a guess at some time, that guess will hold up to any other time. Uh, so that's pretty big. And uh, having a low number of high degree monomials means that uh, with only a few guesses, um, K minus two here with uh, K, the, uh, the degree of the filtering function, uh, with only k minus two guesses, you can manage to cancel all the monomials of degree greater than or equal to three. If it's not clear how you do it, uh, I'll be talking about this in a minute. Uh, that's also, uh, that also can be seen as an algebraic vulnerability in the sense that having very few hydrogen monomials, uh, the filtering function is often quadratic in the key bits. Uh, so how do we proceed? Uh, we're going to make a guess. Uh, we're not exactly going to guess the value of the key bits. Um, that's almost the same. Uh, remember that the, the key is balanced, so we're, there are positions that are zero. We are going to guess several positions of bits that are zero in the key, which is almost equivalent to uh, saying that s several of the key bits equals zero. Then we're going to wait for a time when all these key bits get uh, permuted into all the monomials of degree greater than or equal to three meaning that you get one uh, of the guess key bits in each monomial degree greater than or equal to three. So if the guess is correct, all these monomials are canceled and you are left with, a, uh, with an equation quadratic in the key bits. Uh, so you obtain one equation quadratic in the key bits, you fetch it and you start again until you have enough equations to solve a, quadra uh, a quadratic system. You solve this quadratic, this quadratic system using, for instance, linearization techniques uh, and you get one of two results. Either uh, there is a contradiction, in which case the guess is wrong, and you start again from the beginning with another guess, or the guess is correct, in which case you get the key because it is a system in the key bits. So that's the attack, so no for its complexity. Um, it depends on two main probabilities. Uh, the first one is the probability that the guess is correct. Uh, we denote this by PRG. Um, its formula is not very hard to compute, so it's just given here. Um, the second probability is the probability of obtaining a quadratic equation at some time, which is equivalent to uh, having uh, all the guess, uh, all the guess bits, bits uh, dispatched in all the monomials of degree greater than or equal to three. Uh, in a general case, uh, the formula of this probability is a bit complicated, but uh, if, you, um, if you make the minimum number of guesses, uh, which is the number of monomials of degree greater than or equal to three, in that case, the expression simplifies. 
Um, having those probabilities, we can uh, compute the attack complexity if we assume that um, we are going to solve the quadratic system using linearization techniques and uh, Gaussian elimination. Uh, if we call VL the number of uh, uh, variables in the linear system, which is also the number of equations we need to solve the system, the data complexity can be expressed as the number of equations we need multiplied by the time to get a quadratic equation. Um, that's the number of keystream bits we are going to need to perform the attack. The time complexity can be uh, seen as uh, the time to solve uh, the quadratic system multiplied by the number of guesses we need to get a correct uh, system. And the memory complexity is the, the space to store uh, the, the quadratic system, plus in some models we have to store the data also. Uh, this is in the known IV model, but actually if we have a chosen IV model, we can do a bit better than this for the data because we can see the, the data complexity as the number of queries we have to make to an oracle for uh, the value of the keystream bit. So that's only the, the keystream bits we need to perform the attack, not the keystream bit uh, that we have to generate, but the keystream bits we will actually use. And that's only uh, the number of equations multiplied by the number of guesses we have to make, which is actually quite smaller. Um, now with a few pictures, uh, so this is flip. And down here we have the expression of the keystream bit at time zero in the key bits. In red, we have the linear part. In blue, uh, that's the quadratic part. And in green, it's the triangular function uh, with one monomial of each degree between one and k. So I'm going to make k minus two guesses. Let's say k minus two, uh, that's the minimum I need. Uh, I'm going to guess that the red positions here equal zero. Um, and I'm going to wait until these positions get permuted into all the monomials of degree greater than or equal to three. Um, so at time zero, it doesn't work. There are still monomials of degree greater than or equal to three. At time one, uh, there are also still monomials of degree greater than or equal to three. But at time two, all these monomials get canceled. And if the guess is correct, this is an, a quadratic equation. I fetch it uh, and I start again until I have enough equations to solve the quadratic system. If the guess is correct, I will then get the key. And there are several possible trade-offs for this attack. Um, for instance, we can make more than k minus two guesses. Um, what is going to change basically is that it will require more time because the probability that the guess will be correct uh, will be smaller. But it's going to require less data because um, uh, at each time, there are more chances that the equation will be quadratic, having more uh, bits guessed to zero. Also, we can do a lot of precomputation because uh, the plain text only comes at the end in this attack. Um, or, uh, the quadratic system only depends on the positions of the key bits and on the guess. So all this you can do before as precomputation. You can generate the quadratic system and you can make its inversion. All this can be done offline. And then at the end, you can simply plug in the plain text uh, by, with a simple uh, matrix vector multiplication. So the online time will, will be reduced from uh, basically VL uh, cubed to VL squared. So that's nice. Um, there are other possible improvements. Uh, we can, for instance, may choose a guess better than at random. Uh, one way to do this is to look at the first two to the C permutations and uh, make a guess that uh, gives quadratic equations for many of these first permutations. That way, uh, we don't have to wait as long to get exploitable permutations, and we need less data. Uh, we can also do a better solving, because actually uh, our system is uh, quite specific. It's sparse, it's binary, and it's quadratic. So there are better methods to solve this than uh, linearization techniques with a Gaussian elimination. Um, but we didn't look too much into it because actually the attack is already good enough as it is. Um, and also the attack is entirely parallelizable. Uh, one way to, pow to parallelize it is to uh, make, for instance, one guess on each computer and uh, launch it. Um, we, uh, we made uh, an experimental verification of this on a toy version of six, six, with the key of 64 bits. And uh, we compared the practical complexity with the theoretical one. And what we, get, uh, what we get basically is that the practical complexity is almost the same as uh, the theory. Uh, so if, lo if you look at the table, for instance, we need two to, to the 18.4 uh, keystream bits in practice, which is exactly the same as in theory. So now for the, for the 
sets of parameters for the early version. Um, so uh, in the upper table, you have the, the 80 bit security version. And we have a term complexity of 2 to the 54 in, uh, without any optimizations with a known IB model. That's the first yellow line. But if you put in optimizations and in a chosen IV model, you can reduce this to an online time complexity of 2 to the 40 uh, with 2 to the 54 as pre computation. Uh, for the 128 bit version, without any optimizations, you have a time complexity of 2 to the 68. But if you, if you optimize, uh, you have a time complexity of 2 to the 52. And what we managed to prove actually is that the time complexity is proportional to the square root of the key size. So simply uh, putting in bigger keys is not the best way to patch this kind of, cy of ciphers. Uh, we communicated these results to uh, the designers of Flip, and uh, they changed the cipher to resist uh, or attack. Uh, basically, what they did is they changed the filtering function. They didn't change the linear part or the quadratic part, but they put in more of the so-called triangular functions. Um, and they put in much bigger keys also. So now for the 128-bit security version, the key is 1,394 bits long. And as you can see in the table, uh, the attack is not, uh, is not possible anymore. Um, so that's it. Uh, to conclude, um, we have an attack on the, the flip, flip family of stream ciphers using guess and determine techniques um, that exploit the constant key register and the low number of hydrogen, moment, of hydrogen monomials in the filtering function. This attack is almost practical, and we managed to verify it exper experimentally in the toy version. Um, but there are still open questions about this because uh, we attacked an one instance, but it uh, doesn't mean that the structure in itself is weak. So one question that we can, we can ask is, for instance, uh, whether the constant key register is still an, explo an exploitable weakness in the new versions of Flip. So that's it for me. Thank you for your attention. If you have any questions.